In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, we want to uh, thank you for coming out to our press conference on the whole issue of the building of mosques in America. You notice I didn't just mention the quote unquote ground zero mosque, which it is not, but I talked about the issue of the building of mosques in America. Because while the media, the political pundits, have focused primarily on the center, the community center, two blocks away from ground zero, in reality, there is a growing pattern of opposing mosques not near or in the proximity of ground zero, but opposing mosques all over America. How far is too close? If two blocks near the Burlington factory is too close, then why are in, in Brooklyn mosques building is being opposed in Sheephead Bay, Brooklyn. Is that far enough? How far do we go? Uh, mosque building is opposed and denied in Staten Island. Is that far enough? How far do we go? And I think that's the fundamental question that we have to ask ourselves as Americans. How far do we go? with this encroachment upon religious liberties and the freedom of religion. How far do we go? Not only a mosque being challenged in its in constructions in New York, near Ground Zero, in Brooklyn, Staten Island, but in California. Tennessee, Wisconsin, Alabama, Florida. In fact, the research done by Dr. Akbar Ahmed from the university, American University rather, indicates that indeed the building of mosques and the resistance from the building of mosques has increased throughout America, as well as the destruction and vandalizing of mosques, including a pipe bomb placed in a mosque in Florida, where had the corporate placed it in the right place, mayhem and certainly possibly even fatalities would have occurred. We're looking at even the fact that on 9-11 that there is a church group that's going to burn the Quran. Hmm. America. Book burning. Now, that works well with fascism. Book burning. Doesn't work very well in America. So, this becomes an issue for us. And we've gathered here as uh, national Muslim organizations and other organizations of faith and soon... Uh, we will be joined by Rabbi Waskar um, from the Shalom Center to really put focus on this issue. We at the Muslim American Society are determined to defend the religious rights and freedoms and any encroachment of against the cherished principles of religious freedom for all people, not only Muslims. We do believe that the First Amendment of the United States Constitution is sacrosanct. We refuse to be sacrificed on the altar of political expedience, demagoguery, and opportunism. Do you really want to be the president that bad? Do you really want to control the House and the Senate that bad? That you want to do it off the back of the rights of Muslims? I dare not think that. And I guess as a parent and a grandparent, the fundamental question as I was breaking my Ramadan fast with my son this morning, and he was watching the news and saw someone on CNN talking about stopping any mosque 
in America. And the only way that Muslims, you know, would be accepted in America is if they accept Christianity. And my son was looking at that. And I, as a father and a grandfather, have to ask the question that all Muslims in the country have to ask. What do we tell our children about this place called America, our home? What do we say to them? We say to our children, and we will continue to say to our children, you are not terrorist suspects. You are America's brightest prospects. We say to our children, and we say to the nation, that we, the American Muslims, are determined to uphold the principles of citizenship and the principles enshrined in the Constitution of the United States of America. And that second-class citizenship is not an option. So let me just kind of round it out by saying that during this the blessed month of Ramadan, the month of fasting, caring, compassion, I do believe that there are many Americans who continue to strive for what is good and decent in America. I do believe that there are the better angels of America that want to unite us and not divide us. I truly do believe that there are the better angels who believe in faith over fear and justice for all. I do believe that the better angels of this land recognize that from this hollow grounds of our nation with all of its trials and tribulations sprung this Constitution. This Constitution. And from this Constitution and the, and the forefathers and those who drafted this Constitution sprung a dream called America. It was this dream called America and this Constitution that beat back the barbarity of slavery. It was this Constitution and the American people that ensured that women had the right to vote. It was this Constitution and the American people that beat back red baiting, that ended segregation and Jim Crow. So today, we are united here, calling upon the better angels of America to look beyond the hatred and bigotry. The better angels to look beyond the fear-mongering, to look beyond the fallacy of guilt by association, to look beyond, yes, even the pain and agony that the terrorists inflicted upon all of us on 9-11. Muslims are also victims of 9-11. They also have families who are missing loved ones. So we call upon the better angels to look beyond that which wants to divide our nation. A nation now that is facing unemployment, facing uh, all kinds of of, of, of financial uh, trepidations, homes being lost, double digits when it comes to unemployment. And this is the best that we can do in America? This is what we want to focus on? This is what politicians want to run on? A mosque at Burlington Coat Factory? Not even a mosque, but a community center at Burlington Coat Factory? Two blocks away from where the tragic events of the World Trade Center. Is this what we want to focus on? Is this the best that our politicians can do? I believe not. Again, I believe in the better angels of America. And this month of Ramadan, I will continue to believe in the better angels of America because I believe in a dream called America. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Joining us, and I'm Matthew Bray. I'm the Executive Director of the Muslim American Society of Freedom. And joining us, we have um, various different groups here today. But I'm going to ask uh, my 
human rights and civil rights director. And I actually, my homeboy, we're from the same town too, to actually come and uh, give some words to the, the media pertaining to opposition as it relates to religious freedom and the American Muslim community. Thank you very much.